Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about impingement and rotator cuff tears and rotator cuff tendonitis and swimmer shoulder and things like this that you might hear about um, and just give you a visual of what that really means. So what we're going to do is we're going to start, if you're looking at this anatomy model, um, I'm going to take off a couple layers of muscle because these are the big ones that we see, the big pretty ones, um, but what usually gets irritated in swimming are the ones underneath that, okay? So I'm gonna actually flip this guy around, and then we're gonna take off his uh, top layer of muscle, okay? So we're gonna take off this upper trap and lower trap. So that leaves us down here with rotator cuff muscles, rhomboid muscles that we can see. Um, don't worry about memorizing the names of these muscles. Um, that's what I'm here for. That's what a therapist is for. We can, we can be the ones thinking about all that, but I just wanted to give you a visual of what's happening. So if you look at the shoulder, let me introduce you to these rotator cuff muscles. There are four, okay? First one is going to be called your supraspinatus muscle. It is responsible for starting motions coming out to the side with your shoulder, okay? Then you have your infraspinatus, which is right below it. It actually works on rotating your arm out, okay? Then you have your teres minor. Um, think of teres minor as kind of just like a helper motion. It still helps rotate the arm out. It still pulls your arm out, um, and it still stabilizes your shoulder joint, okay? So we're gonna flip this guy around, and if you can see where the yellow highlight is in there, that is your subscap muscle, subscapularis. It rotates your arm in, okay? All of them work a ton in swimming. In particular, your subscap that's highlighted right now should essentially be firing almost 100% of the time uh, in your strokes. What happens with rotator cuff impingement or rotator cuff tendonitis, if you can see this little bitty space under here, okay? So where your subscapularis goes under. See how it comes out from underneath the other side of this bone? I'll show you all the different angles. So you've got your collarbone coming in here and then you've got the top of your shoulder blade. Okay, so a few different things can happen. Um, you wanna think about your shoulder joint like a ball and socket, right? So if you're looking and look at the green over here or the yellow, whatever color it turns it green, okay? So if that's kind of the top shelf and then you're looking at the ball of your arm here, what theoretically should happen is when you go to reach overhead, that space right in here should stay there, okay? Because that space is where this muscle lives, right? Um, it's also potentially where your biceps tendon in the front is, but right now we're talking rotator cuff, so that's where that lives. Now, when that space is decreased for any reason, whether that is the ball is not down enough, whether it's because it's sitting too high in there, or if it's because your muscle itself has become irritated and it gets thicker, either way, impingement is when that muscle or any of the structures around that muscle are getting pinched basically underneath that bone okay um, so that's kind of an overview of impingement then the other type of impingement that you can get actually can occur more on the back side here um, you'll have a lot of swimmers talk about pain in the back of the shoulder uh, similar concept it's when they are more pulling back and things are pinching in that area, okay? The other thing that you wanna be aware of is biceps. So if you can see, there's one part of your bicep comes up to the front, and then the other part, this tendon, if you can see, it goes right underneath that same kind of space where your rotator cuff does. Um, so people that have pain in the front of the shoulder, so these are all just, I just wanted to give you guys a visual of what's really happening. Um, a rotator, rotator cuff tear, there's multiple different versions of it, and it's just basically a percentage of how much damage is happening. Um, a minor one is not actually torn. Think of it like rope, okay? So if you were to sit there with a really dull butter knife and cut on a rope, eventually the outside part's gonna start fraying a little bit, but the inside part is fine. Okay, think of a muscle and a tendon, something like, like that. So if you have a swimmer who's, let's say they're averaging, I don't know, we'll just use, say for 4,000 yards practice, 3,000, 4,000 yards practice. 
if they're already having irritation here and you're constantly, constantly, constantly kind of pinching it underneath here, you start to get rotator cuff tears. Um, they respond excellent to conservative treatment with strengthening. But what happens is these, these rotator cuff muscles down here, their job when your arm goes overhead is to pull that ball down a little bit so that that space is clearing. What happens is when you're swimming, those muscles get over fatigued and they stop firing as well. When they stop firing as well, instead of pulling that ball down, things ride up too high, you get this repetitive motion here, and instead of having that space, it's squished up in there and things start to get funky, okay? So that's an overview for you. Hopefully it is helpful.